Hello everyone, and today I'll be doing a score review for the game Guns, Gore, and Cannoli. Now this game was developed by Rogueside, and it was published by Rogueside. Now this game is a 2D action platformer set in the vein of games like Castlevania or Contra, where you're doing run and gun. Now I'll be scoring this game on... on five different categories. Then, starting with graphics, this game has hand-drawn, cartoonish, comic book-looking graphics with, since it takes place in the monster era, it makes sense that it's got, it, they did a good job of detailing the outfits and the way people looked of that era. Uh, so overall, the, the graphics for this game are really good with the goofy demeanor that this game um, presents itself with. Now, as for the story, you're playing as uh, Vinny Can uh, Cannoli, who is sent by the Blue Chico gang boss to go rescue a man named Frankie and bring him back. Along the way, a zombie outbreak starts, and that's where the story begins. Now, the story is given to you in exposition cutscenes, so it's not really portrayed during the game, really. But during portions of the game, you will get scenes that explain it instead of it being live action in the game. All in all, the story for this game is pretty good considering what they went for and the fact that it was uh, a small time game. Now for the gameplay and control, this uh, this game's gameplay is pretty simple. You run, you gun, you jump. It's all very simple stuff. Nothing new for those who have played games like this in the past, so it's not really anything surprising. Uh, the Gameplay itself, though, or not gameplay, the controls itself, though, are surprisingly really smooth and really well done. The, the jumping feels good, the gunplay feels good, and the act of getting from one point to another seems like, or gives you to feel that you're at progressing. Now, the only issue I have with this is as you progress through the game, the difficulty spikes pretty high later on, so even on easy, it ends up getting to the point where you could die very, very, very quickly. Now for the music sound effects, the sound effects are uh, very well done with the gore sound effects, the gun sound effects, the enemies and the zombies, and the soldiers that you hear talking in the background are all really well done in voice, which I'm actually surprised by that. And... Uh, the music, there's almost always some kind of music rolling in the background to the theme of the era that this game takes place in. So, you always feel like you're in the kind of situation you're in. So, I believe that this takes place in the 1920s, according to the timeline. So, it's got the 1920s look, and you got music from that era, and, well, while most guns from that era are can be in, or the guns that are in the game most of them are from that area with some funnier ones like the uh, I think it's the Tesla coil gun but outside of that all the music and sound effects are actually very well done now for the last one and to me this is the one that holds it back the most would be the achievements while all the achievements are basically beat the game play through, insert set, set stage name, doing this, like playing through with the double barrel shotgun for one of the stages, and exclusively only using that gun, so you're probably going to die a lot doing achievements like that, because you, you're not going to have enough ammo to kill everything, so you have to dodge a bunch, or run from zombies and um, other people. Now, what really gets it for the achievements is the fact that, as I mentioned in the gameplay, 
there can be a very steep difficulty curve in the game. There's also achievements tied to every single difficulty. And if you're playing solo, it is very hard to complete the higher difficulties. Even if you're good at uh, platforming and action games like this. So, on... Uh, normally, I rank a video game or DLC 5 out of 10 as average instead of the industry standard of 7 or 8. And the game has, like I said, it has good graphics, um, a pretty good story. The, the gameplay and controls, so the gameplay is fair, but the controls are actually really well done and smooth. The music and sound effects are both excellent, and the achievements are good until you get to the difficulty ones, which, I mean, honestly, I think difficulty achievements are just artificial. So, I'll give this game a 7 out of 10. If you're a fan of 2D uh, action game, uh, running gun action games, it's worth at least one playthrough, especially since the game is only, well, in America, it's only about 10 bucks, I believe. But if you're not into it, I would say it's an easy pass. I wouldn't even worry about it if you're not into 2D gaming or running guns. So, 7 out of 10. I'll see you guys in the next quarter review.